And who gives you access to the internet on your TV? Sega! Play games, surf the net, only on Sega Saturn. Sega! Reload! Reload! It's becoming a bit of a gag on this series that majority of the videos are about online services for retro consoles. The last episode was about the X-Band for instance, and that signified episode 6 out of 12 about something resembling online play through a phone line or satellite. Okay, I guess that's a clear cut 50%, but for this video, we're officially tipping the scales. The Sega Netlink released in the October of 1996 and was a modem for the cult favourite, the Sega Saturn. Hardly any games were supported and the true online functions were dire compared to what you would experience on a conventional personal computer, but it does hold the distinctive title of being the first online console service that allowed gamers to use their choice of ISP. For that reason alone, the Netlink cements itself in history as a wonder of the retro gaming world. Now, the Netlink is not to be confused with the Japanese exclusive, SegaNet. While that is a modem for the Saturn as well, it was a completely different service that predates the Netlink. It was also slower and used different online services, not allowing users to choose an ISP for instance. I guess I'll cover that another day, but the Netlink was exclusive to North America. And on that point, a quick side note. There was a test of the service in Finland, but ultimately, Europe's network infrastructure was considered too trash at the time, and plans of a full launch were scrapped. Even though an internet connection was required, the modems connected to each other, not a central server. This does mean it will operate today if both users have a working old school phone line. If you don't, maybe ask your parents. But I'll get into using this in the modern day towards the end of the video. Back to 1996, Sega recommended the 28.8K modem connected to the ISP, Concentric. I guess they had some sort of partnership. In reality, any ISP would do as long as they met a standard of technical specifications. This included Netcom, PSI Net, and Earthlink, but not AOL for whatever reason. The Netlink initially sold for $199, pricey for a console peripheral, but somewhat well priced for an internet device at the time. This included the modem that plugged into the cartridge slot and a disc that included a custom web browser. It should be noted that this disc is required for the modem to run, so make sure it's included if you're buying on the second-hand market. While not necessary to function, the web browsing experience was aided by an official four-button mouse that connected into the controller port. There was an official keyboard too, although this appeared to use a traditional PS2 port that was plugged in with an adapter. Assumedly, any PS2 keyboard would work. The online services could be navigated with a controller and an on-screen keyboard, however, this would likely be an irritating experience depending on your patience. There were features like a magnifying glass for small text and thoughtful shortcuts implemented using the Saturn controller, but nothing in 1996 beats an old-fashioned keyboard and mouse combo. So, how were these online services? Well, as you can imagine, the web browser was limited compared to what you'd find on a PC at the time. Early versions didn't support all types of HTML, framed web pages, or even IRC. Regardless, the browser was developed by Planet Web Incorporated, who would go on to develop a browser for the Dreamcast 2. A technical feat on a console for the time, the entire program resided in only 570 kilobytes. Codenamed Sega City and later renamed to Netlink City, the virtualized web browsing experience, a popular way to interact with the internet at the time, was associated with Planet Oasis, an existing service by Arc Interface. This was represented as 20 city blocks and was ultimately a way to show 200 curated website links since search engines were still in their infancy. This included websites such as the Smithsonian, the Disney Channel, and of course, Concentric. As well as surfing the web, users could even upload their game saves. But wait, games! We haven't mentioned games yet! Well, there's a reason for this, and that's timeline related. Astonishingly, no games were compatible with online play through the modem until 12 months after release. I kid you not. And ultimately, only 5 games would ever be made compatible. These were Duke Nukem 3D, Saturn Bomberman, Sega Rally Championship Plus, Virtual On Cyber Troopers Netlink Edition, and Daytona USA CCE Netlink Edition. 
As well as being a mouthful to say, this special edition of Daytona is extremely rare since it was only ever available through mail order. I found a complete sold listing on eBay for $5,000, likely making this one of the priciest games found on the system. On the other hand, this clown is currently trying to offload his copy for 17 k Good luck mate. Out of these five, four only offered two player multiplayer over the net, with just Bomberman supporting four players simultaneously. Sounds a bit... crap, doesn't it? Well, the cold hard statistics certainly seem to agree. And by cold hard, I mean numbers that changed with every source I read. Sega's initial sales goal was 100,000 units, but estimates of the actual sales range from 50,000, which is not bad, that's half I suppose, down to a paltry 15,000. Either way, that accounts for less than 1% of the Sega Saturn gamer base. Why is that? A low amount of supported games would certainly turn gamers off, especially when it took so long for those few to appear. It's alleged that development was tricky, potentially putting off prospective developers too. Expensive long distance calls could be an issue as well, since it connected modem to modem over a phone line. Connect to someone across the country for a few matches of Bomberman and it's going to cost ya. Over that, let's not gloss over the weird and edgy marketing. From New York getting nuked because why should the military have all the fun, to advertising that you can email your brother asking for money. Good one Sega. It's a shame too, since there were a few nice features included, like X-Band support for matchmaking. Shout out to my last video in the series for more information on that. It ultimately seems as if Sega dug themselves enough of a ditch, as per usual, and developers didn't see the risk in getting involved. Even though it was quite an expensive peripheral on launch, another point against its favour, Sega released a much cheaper and better value bundle in 1997. The Netlink game package included the modem, the browser disc, and copies of Sega Rally and Virtual On for $100. Additionally, one could purchase the Sega Saturn Solution Pack, which included all mentioned, plus a Sega Saturn and an official keyboard. Not bad. Not bad at all. It was too late though, as it didn't help the product take off. That's the last bundle they sold as far as I'm aware, but I did find this very sad listing from a June 2000 issue of Gamers Republic. Video game liquidators were flogging it off for just $15. Yikes. You'd think that would be the end for the Netlink, and it was, until 2017. Previously, play was possible if you lived in 2002 and still had a phone line, although telephone line simulators have been documented as working for LAN like versus matches. However, if you follow a link I've left in the description to the forum Dreamcast Talk, a clever cookie has written a guide that uses VoIP to more or less enable online remote play again. It's even compatible with the Japanese SegaNet. Moreover, the modems are still reasonably priced online. There are extra costs involved of course, like a VoIP compatible modem, but overall this is a facet of gaming history that remains affordable. So there we have it, another ambitious post-Genesis project from Sega that failed. Ultimately, there were just better ways to surf the web in 1996, namely a computer. Many more games were supported and there were no limitations on the browser. So little RAM was available to the Netlink that web pages couldn't even be cached. Sure, the idea was there, but it would be several more years until we would see the real dawn of the online console gaming age.